the installer is actually giving us a hint at this stage of what we should be doing next, which is to go ahead and mount and run the IT Analytics installer. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and U mount, unmount the ISO that we had set up to for the Oracle installation. I'm going to go back into the area where I put the ISOs. Now I'm going to do the IT Analytics installer. I'm going to mount that. And I actually have a slightly different name directory already created for that. So mount minus O loop IT Analytics installer. Your uh, file name will differ once the package is out for general availability. It won't have the beta label on it. And then um, we'll go ahead and specify slash mnt slash disgave. Once again, we start these installers from the root and we can initiate we want to see that listing. We can do a listing of our mounted ISO. And the executable that we're going to be working against or with at this, at this point now will be the IT Analytics installer. Make sure that we're at the root slash mnt slash disk a, whatever directory you chose to mount your ISO in, it's capital I. Okay, so um, one of the things the installer has done is to confirm or check whether our, what our settings are for the SE Linux, and it's found that uh, we are going to create problems for our installation with enforcing. So we'll, at this moment we'll go ahead and initiate a command to set our SE Linux to permissive mode. You can change that SE Linux mode without needing a reboot of this Linux server by setting this using the command set enforce space zero. If we want to see that change we can use the SE status all one string we can see the current mode is now permissive. At this stage then we should be able to up arrow and try to restart our installer and we've proceeded further. Um, it's not mandatory that we run at a value of 5 for our um, run level so I'm going to go ahead and accept my current run level. This machine will be both the Oracle uh, database server as well as the web server. We, ser we do, do have the ISO, we know because we mounted it. Once again we get an opportunity to accept a license agreement, spacing through that. And accept it. CentOS 7.1 is the host name of this particular server. However, when you install your NetBackup IT Analytics portal, typically the domain name that you would enter here would be your network domain name, but it doesn't have to be. To, to sort of prove that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, create an artificial so-called extension of RSV for my domain and in fact I'm just going to make it uh, RSV lab. So 
So the system automatically has read the IP address for this portal inside this, this lab kit I'm working in. Uh, that's correct. The IP address for the database server is the same. I could have also changed this to localhost, but we'll just go ahead and leave the IP as is. And we review and indicate that yes, those values look correct. Go ahead and accept them being written into the hosts file. And we do, at this stage, want to go ahead and create the database schema. As I mentioned, I had done a previous installation and uninstall, so those uh, Aptar and Tomcat homes were still there um, from that process. That's okay. Fresh install, you'll, you'll just see those created. Um, and now we can see that the installer is beginning to lay down binary content. Prompted again for our um, our lab name, our domain, excuse me. So we'll just call this rsv.lab. dialog that you're seeing now at this stage of the installation is um, we've laid down the Oracle binaries and now for the first time Oracle is actually the instance is starting so we can see the default RAM allocation um, laid out is 12 gigabytes we can go and adjust that after installation but uh, the minimum requirement for Oracle database for our installer to even be to run would be that 12 gigabytes in size, and that's just Oracle. The process that we're seeing now, where the, um, the CatCon processes have begun, is absolutely the longest phase of the portal install. And in this uh, wrapper prompts, we're not going to see a lot of feedback while these very large CatCon processes run. Uh, what I like to do, you don't have to do it, but it's handy to just be able to go ahead and open another PuTTY session. And I'm going to log in as root into this same kit. And then um, you can see that we get an indication in the in the wrapper of where activity is being written. So we can actually CD into that temp directory. And then what we can do is tail. We can watch these these logs being written with the tail command. And So um, again, it's not necessary to do this tail operation, but I, I find it personally comforting <laughs> to be able to see that uh, our initiating screen is very quiet. You could even wonder if it's gone to sleep. In fact, you can see from, from the logs that there's a tremendous amount of activity occurring. Lots and lots and lots of database operations. The first two CatCon processes are um, the, definitely the longest running, the second one being the, the longer of the two. And um, I'm actually going to pause the recording at this point just to save the size of the, the recording size, keep it smaller. So the when you see the process terminated by CatCon, that's an indication that the first uh, 
log has completed. We also see evidence of that, that in the screen behind, it switched from the log that we were initially tailing and it's now started to write a new one, the cat proc zero. So I can control C out of my tail. I can just up arrow and I can change the file name instead of the catalog. We want to watch the cat proc. And once again, long, lots and lots of content being written. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording at this point because this is going to run a number of minutes. Those large first initial large CatCon processes completed, the remainder of them will complete relatively quickly. To the cat proc processes complete uh, their runs and the logs, then the installer goes into a, a very visually active stage where we can actually see the uh, NetBackup IT Analytics objects being created into the pluggable database. The dialog that we see now indicates the completion of the NetBackup IT Analytics portal installation, you'll really want to pay attention to the text that's on the screen at this point that describes how to log into the portal, what the uh, super user username is, what the initial default password is, which you'll get an opportunity to change upon first login, and then also uh, additional opportunities to change the default portal and aptar user uh, passwords how to do that. That concludes our initial installation.